Good morning. Welcome to Story Time with Pastor Robin. I hope everyone is having a great day so far. The sun is shining and that always makes a day better. Uh, just a reminder, this week we will be here Monday through Thursday, 10 o'clock for Story Time. And this week we're doing special stories that are favorites of staff members at the church. And so today's story is a favorite of Mrs. Carpenter, one of our preschool teachers. So the story today is the tale of Peter Rabbit. As we get ready for Easter, I thought this would be a fun story for, for us to look at. The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in the sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the woods to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuce and some French beans. And then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But around the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting young cabbages. But he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe among the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on all four legs and went faster so that he might have gotten away if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large button on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and he shed big tears. But his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and begged him to try to free himself. Mr. McGregor found a sieve, which he intended to put on top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. Peter rushed into the tool shed and jumped into the watering can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Suddenly, Peter sneezed, Crack! Choo! 
Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. He tried to catch Peter, who jumped out a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had no idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp from sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the woods. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it was alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back toward the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe, scratch, 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 scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. But soon, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned toward Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go, a long straight walk behind some blackberry bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the woods outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes as a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looking behind him until he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and he shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in two weeks. That evening, Peter was not very well. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea. She gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime, she said. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. the end. Thank you for tuning in to story time today. If you have a favorite story that you would like for me to read, be sure to let me know by posting it in the comments below or just bring the book to the church office and put it in the mailbox outside the door and I will be sure to read it. Again, this week we're reading some of the favorites of the church staff, and this one was for Mrs. Carpenter. So we send a huge shout out to Mrs. Carpenter. We're so glad that she's a part of our preschool and that all of you students, I hope you remember her too. And at some point, we'll all be able to be back together again. So you have a great day. We'll be back here again tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Bye.